I'm going to be rebuilding the Carolina Panthers, but with the new addition of Deontay Johnson. The Panthers definitely need a rebuild after going 2-15, giving up the number one overall pick and having no pieces around Bryce Young in this past season. But in this free agency, I'm not going to lie, they didn't do bad, but they didn't do necessarily stellar. They definitely improved the offensive line and addressed a lot of positions, especially the interior offensive line. Hopefully, Ike McQuanu and Taylor Moten continues to progress throughout the year. Yes, I'm fully aware that Taylor Moten is third years old so he doesn't need much more progression to do he's 30 hopefully he just stabilizes and actually becomes a real real good protector for Bryce Young because overall he does look good on paper I don't really know his stats this season but in general the Panthers offensive line was atrocious this year with that being said they did make the right move the year before getting Ike McQuanu because without Ike McQuanu and no offensive line it would have been much worse for Bryce Young but hopefully they can continue to build on this offensive line because this is just I think a temporary fix I don't think this is a long-term solution but we are here for the man himself Deontay Johnson in Madden he's 28 so he will start regression they had to give up Dante Jackson and some later round picks for him they still need to build around Bryce Young I still think this was a good move for their offense. They need to get in pieces for him to develop so that way they can further evaluate his real potential. But people are going to sit here and act like Adam Thielen was a bad receiver this year. A lot of people were just like, oh, he has he has no weapons, like zero. Adam Thielen had over 100 receptions and over 1,000 yards, only four touchdowns though last year. Still, it wasn't a bad season, especially with how bad and how long it took Bryce Young to get the ball out because, of course, this offensive line is atrocious. He was running for his life. So Adam Thielen getting 1,000 yards was a bit surprising, but in Madden, he is 34, normal dev, not really too much to build on here. Running back situation, Miles Sanders is atrocious. I don't he's, he's just not, he's not good anymore. For those of you guys who are Miles Sanders defenders, I don't want to hear it. He's, he's not that good. Jonathan Mingo, hopefully he progresses in real life. I was really surprised whenever... The the Panthers picked Jonathan Mingo over Josh Downs. I was a huge Josh Downs fan going into that draft. Still, hopefully he can develop here. And again, as I said before, improvement on the interior offensive line. Hopefully it does better this year. I don't know how crazy these guys are. I know Robert Hunt is actually a solid guard. Damian Lewis, hopefully he develops a little bit more. Because in Madden, he's 27, star dev. He's only a 75 though with minus two morale. So hopefully he can develop more in Madden. But for Bryce Young, he better develop in real life. Now, defensively, they did a little plug and play here with some of the players like Jadavian Clowney replacing Brian Burns, but only getting a two and a five for Brian Burns. Whenever two years ago, the Rams offer you two first round picks from him and then you declined it. I know it's like, oh, he wanted too much money. To be fair, you don't have to pay Bryce Young for another four years, including his fifth year option. So you could have paid him an absolute bag for the next four years. And if the team still sucked, then he could have gone to another team. He didn't like his situation they moved into the Giants which obviously wasn't much better and then the Giants paid him an absolute bag so either way I don't think it was necessarily the best move to move him for a two and a five, but obviously he wasn't happy with being the worst team in the NFL. They moved Dante Jackson to get Deontay Johnson. So now they have Dane Jackson here, I guess. It's not really much of an improvement, but he's here. And then you got JC Horn, absolute stud, nothing more to be said there. Shaq Thompson is nice in real life, but again, we are playing Madden. He is 30 years old, star dev. It's not going to be much help. Still do want to keep him around for as long as I can on this read, but I think I'll just keep him around for one or two more years. Xavier Woods, not a bad safety option. They also got Jordan Fuller at the strong safety position. So overall, once again, this team is trash, but of course, that's why I'm here to fix it. And then Derek Brown got a massive contract in real life, which I guess they decided to give to him instead of Brian Burns. But anyways, guys, apart from that, I'm going to move into this draft and try to build more around Bryce Young. In the early second round, I'm picking up a wide receiver, Troy Fl Franklin here at a Oregon 6'1", 180, normal dev, 93 speed, 94 acceleration. Surprised he only has normal dev. I think he's a really, really good in real life. I'd be hyped for a Panthers fan if I actually got him in real life. But of course, hopefully he can develop around Bryce Young. In the third round, trying to improve this offensive line for Bryce Young, Cedric Van Pran out of Georgia, 6'4", 300 pounds, hidden dev, 88 strength, not very athletic, but still A's and B's across the board. He will probably start at center just because of his youth and his hidden dev. Now, this is the team after the draft. Cedric Van Pran is actually a 6'4", 69 overall nice so he's actually gonna start under austin corbett until his contract runs out and it looks like this ai picked up ben Sitton out of kansas state that's cool i guess he's gonna start over ian thomas just because he has a higher overall than everyone else here troy franklin i'm honestly gonna put him at the two as much as well as adam thielen did in real life uh, he's just, he's going to be a number four just because I'm mad and he's super old and I can't really do much about that. 
Bryce Young, though, of course, I hope he develops. And then Chuba Hubbard, 81 overall. Also, we have Andy Dalton, who has a mental attack, which will help boost the XP of Bryce Young. This defense, it doesn't look the greatest on paper, but Derek Brown, hopefully Jadavion Clowney also carries this line. He did pretty well with the Ravens last year. And then JC Horn's going to have to carry the secondary for sure. Can't believe I forgot to mention this, but if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you like and or subscribe. The channel is growing quickly. And if we get this video to 150 likes, I'll do whatever rebuild the top comment says. I do that in every one of my rebuilds. Sometimes you guys hit it, sometimes you don't. It just lets me know if you guys actually want the top comment as a rebuild. But apart from that, guys, let's move into year number one and the midseason mark. Three and four, third in the division, already more wins than our previous year. So that's a W for the team. The offense is performing actually kind of nicely here. The defense is 31st in the league in points per game. So not so nice. Coming off a win to the Saints, breakout DB here. Question for you, coach. Been watching Jordan Fuller. Let's see if he gets that breakout. I'll probably forget about it, but hopefully can get superstar dev for the scouting national focus i know it's like we should keep building around bryce young i think i want a halfback but you can't really develop those in madden in time it takes a really long time i want another receiver i want to develop jonathan mingo troy franklin maybe we're gonna eventually have to replace deontay johnson maybe i can just get a baller in free agency o-line on paper in madden they have star dev they're young they could develop so for that with that being said i think i'm gonna go with defensive back here for the negotiations Derek brown doesn't want to be here he got a bag in real life so i'm just gonna give him very player friendly i don't know what it exactly it was in real life but he's getting mega pay here and even though I wasn't looking to return this off. There is getting real tempting. Okay. I guess we'll just deal with that in the offseason. Shaq Thompson doesn't want to be here. I'm cool with another one-year deal with Shaq Thompson because I have the money to keep him. He's an 85 overall. He kind of doesn't want to be here, but he resigns on a big one-year contract. Austin Corbett, honestly, I just don't really want because I have Cedric Van Pran behind him. So I'm just going to write out that contract. Chuba Hubbard, he would not be a bad depth player. Do I want to pay $5 million a year for him? Probably not. So I'm going to move on from that. And then hopefully I can get him or someone cheaper in free agency. Ian Thomas, not really. He's already 28. Yeah. Xavier Woods, Terrence Marshall, and everyone else here. I'm just not really that interested in. I can just get a new kicker and punter in free agency. And then Ika Mukwanu, I'll accept that option at the end of the year. Week nine, coming off a week eight loss, 28-7 to the Eagles. Jordan Fuller had a pretty quiet game out there. Really? You think so? We lost to the Saquon Barkley Eagles, got beaten into the ground. Let's move into the playoffs. 10 and seven, top of this week division. Falcons go seven and 10 with Kirk Cousins. Saints go five and 12 with Carr. Buccaneers just do atrocious with Baker Mayfield. Our defense still sucks and our offense is mid, so I don't even know how we got here at 10 and 7, but hey, I'll take it. Stats and awards. Bryce Young is a top five QB in the NFL, 13th best offense in the NFL, 13th best defense. Eh, 14 receptions may say top 10 rather than top five, but still 4,200 yards, 38 touchdowns, 14 receptions, 106 pass rating. Amazing year from him. Amazing comeback year for him. Rushing wise, Shuba Hubbard, 1,000 yards, 3.7 per carry, 7 touchdowns. Not stellar, but for an 81 overall, not bad. Deontay Johnson with an amazing season though. 101 receptions, 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns. Great year. Troy Franklin with a great rookie year as well. 11 touchdowns, 1,000 yards, 90 receptions. Adam Thielen, 800 yards, 8 touchdowns. I really wanted Jonathan Mingo to be in the slot because again, wide receiver four here's, as you can see, do nothing. Thing. Shaq Thompson, 144 tackles, tackles for a loss, 14 for Ashawn Robinson, sacks 13 for Jadavion Clowney, that's surprising, seven for Derek Brown, interceptions four for Jordan Fuller, safeties on team one for Caleb Vaughn, chase on total bust in real life, and zero defensive touchdowns. Can we beat the Seattle Seahawks to give Bryce Young his first ever playoff win here at home? We do not. 26 to 14, let's move into the offseason. And the Niners do not get their revenge on the Ravens in the Super Bowl. 11 years later in 2024, the Ravens win the Super Bowl over the Niners again. And that would be the Niners' fourth Super Bowl loss in their past four Super Bowls. That's actually crazy. Lamar Jackson wins the Super Bowl MVP and the league MVP. And there are no awards here for the Panthers. Unfortunately, Troy Franklin does not win a rookie of the year. It's Jaden Daniels on the Commanders. In the NFC South, nobody retires. For the team upgrades, Troy Franklin does get started. Out. That's what I wanted to see. And Deion Dante Johnson gets X Factor. That's awesome to see. No other upgrades on offense though. Defensively, Jordan Fuller does get superstar even after failing his breakout. Johnson gets start Fs. Jadevian Clowney gets 13 sacks. No dev upgrade. That's kind of crazy, but Melton here. Who is this guy? Max Melton out of Rutgers. Looks like the AI picked him up. Not bad depth there, but apart from that, let's move into the re-signing. For the re-signings, Derek Brown. Going to give him a fat contract. Once again, very player friendly. He resigns on that. He got a fat contract in real life. I don't know exactly what it was, nor do I care. Ika Mukwanu, 
his option has been accepted. For those of you guys saying, oh, why don't you have the contracts right? Because it's Madden, and if EA updates their game, then I would do it, but EA doesn't up update their game past their Super Bowl because it incentivizes you just to buy the next game instead of actually doing their job. For It's like, this is like, realistically, Madden is a $30 game every year, and they price it at $70 because they know no other company makes NFL games. They just price gouge you every year. Anyways, done with my rants. Austin Corbett, no. Chuba Hubbard, no. Ian Thomas, no. All these other guys already said no to them. Actually, Andy Dalton, does he still have that mentor tag? Yeah, he does. So with that being said, I'm going to re-sign Andy Dalton just because he has a mentor tag. Just do a three-year deal. I'm sure he'll retire within the next year or so, but it doesn't matter. I don't think I want anyone else here. Kicker, punter, don't really care about. Let's move into free agency. After free agency, I got a new punter in Ryan Stonehouse and a new kicker in Evan McPherson with Superstar Devs. So that's sick. Also got Michael Pierce on a one-year deal. Same thing with Xavier and Howard. Xavier Woods on a two-year deal here, but I gave him cheaper money. AJ Dillon on a two-year deal and Yannick Ngakwe as a temporary one-year deal as well. So let's move into the draft. In the first round, picking up a new edge rusher here whenever Jadavian Clowney probably ages out and leaves. Earl Calloway out of Georgia, 6'2", 260, hidden dev. Speed rusher archetype, very balanced athleticism here. F zone coverage, it's fine. He's rushing off the edge. B hit power, but he had very, very nice, good, solid, great athleticism across the board so that's why i took him here in the first round in the third round because i didn't have a second round pick still stacking out the defensive line cedric lowry lowry i'm stupid either way 6 2 288 hidden dev 84 strength very balanced athleticism as well a play rec b pursuit and b finesse moves year number two i mainly focused on defense in this draft i need to get a running back miles sanders and aj Dillon aren't going to cut it here going to move troy franklin to the two and honestly i think i'm going to cut adam thielen he's just i just don't want him here I lose a little bit of money if I have him. How much longer is his contract, by the way? Is it like, it's only the final year. And if I lose money, fine. I'll just leave him at the fourth string where he's not going to do anything. Rest of the team looks good. O-line, interior-wise, youth-wise, development-wise. It looks good, honestly. Real life, obviously not. Defensively, Lowry here is a 69 overall. Nice Callaway. I'm going to move to defensive end. Bingo, bingo, bongo. He's now at right end. Bar knows me playing left outside linebacker. Xavier Woods is back. DBs honestly don't look that bad. Put them on one-year deals. Specialist-wise, Mingo is going to be in the slot. Troy Franklin's going to be at the two there, I guess. Callaway's going to be rushing off the edge like I like him to. Clowney, Melton, Shaq Thompson. Everyone else looks good here. Year number two, I mean, we were 10 and 7 in the first year. We got an X Factor receiver now. And then Troy Franklin is at the two. Mingo is in the slot. I think this team can be really, really good here. And apart from that, I just need Bryce Young to develop. So let's move into the midseason mark. Five and two, top of the division at the midseason mark. Offense is doing great. Defense is 17th in the league for points per game. Defensive rushing game is eighth for some reason. I improved my corners in terms of overall. Kept the same safeties, but they suck now for some reason. Scouting national focus. I think I'm just going to stick with corner here. For the players ready to negotiate, Deontay Johnson doesn't want to be here because team doesn't have a franchise QB. I mean, he was top five in passing touchdowns and passing yards last year, but hopefully that changes by the end of the year. So I'm going to wait on that. JC Horn, going to give him a five-year contract and he re-signs on about 12 million a year. Jordan Fuller, superstar dev. He doesn't like our scheme fit. Eh, I don't really think I necessarily want him. He has superstar dev, but like, do I want to overpay 10 million a year for an 81 overall who's about to aggress? I don't think so. Robert Hunt, regression for offensive linemen starts at like 31, 32. I'll give him a three-year player-friendly deal here and he re-signs with the team. Damian Lewis, he's 28. He doesn't want to be here because we're not historic champs. I'm just going to hold off to the end of the year. And if he still says no after, if we make like a deep playoff run, if he still says no, then I'm just going to move on, find someone just as good as him in the draft that I won't have to pay. Taylor Moten, he's 31, 17 million a year. Damn, this is expensive. I'm just going to do two years, see if he wants that. I have the money to pay him, so I will. And he re-signs. Shaq Thompson, he's regressing. I want to see how far he falls at the end of the year. Same thing with the Xavier Howard, Michael Pierce, Jadevian Clowney, all rules apply to them as well. Josie Joel, I don't really want him either. And then Yannick Ngakwe was just a temporary sign. Adam Thielen, I'm writing out his contract. Bryce Young, I'll accept his option. But apart from that, we have a lot of money for this upcoming free agency. But for now, let's move into the playoff. Back-to-back -back years in the playoffs after going 2-15 and in real life for the Panthers as they finish 11-6, top of the division, coming off a loss here to the 8-9 Buccaneers. 
24 to 21 here to face the 10 and 7 Philadelphia Eagles. We didn't have a good time with them losing 28 to 7 at the midseason mark last year, but Barkley with four per carry, 1400 yards, 20 touchdowns, amazing year for him so far. Panthers fourth in offensive points per game, 16th in defensive points per game. Looks like the defensive rush game improved, but the passing game leveled out here from 28th to 16th. So that's nice to see. Defensively, Bryce Young, top five QB again. Hopefully he doesn't have too many interceptions. Fourth best offense in the league, ninth best defense here uh, the interceptions are back all right 4400 yards 34 touchdowns 105 pass rating this would be a nice season but 17 interceptions is such a stain on a stat sheet it looks so bad either way aj Dillon, 1100 yards 3.8 per carry 18 touchdowns is nice but 3.8 per carry needs to get up he's only gonna regress he's about to turn 28 so again i need a new running back deontay johnson 109 receptions 1500 yards 12 touchdowns amazing year troy franklin bit of a step back this year having nine less touchdowns about 50 less yards than the previous year but still jonathan mingo 800 yards 11 touchdowns improvement here then a tight end with a nice six touchdowns 700 yards Defensively, Shaq Thompson, 148 tackles, tackles for a loss, 18 for Derrick Brown, sacks, 16 for Derrick Brown, 13 and a half for Jadevian Clowney, 6 and a half for Michael Pierce, Callaway, 9 tackles for a loss, 4 sacks, not a crazy rookie year, but it's not horrible, I guess, but Clowney is still balling. Interceptions, 6 for J.C. Horn, safety is on the team, 0, and defensive touchdowns is 1 for Shaq Thompson. Can we beat the 10 and 7 Philadelphia Eagles to move on to the divisional round for Bryce Young's first ever playoff win? We do not, again, losing back-to-back -back seasons, 31 to 20. Let's move into the offseason. In the offseason, the Raiders win the Super Bowl against the Cowboys. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. wins the Super Bowl MVP. Okay, Jalen Hurts wins the league MVP, and there are no awards here for the Panthers. In the NFC South, Allen Robinson, Tyron Matthew, and Cam Jordan all retire on the Saints. Andy Dalton and Adam Thielen both retire with the Panthers. Jake Matthews with the Falcons and Levante David with the Buccaneers. For the team upgrades, Deontay Johnson has been balling with, with us, but any other upgrades on offense? None that I can see, unfortunately. Defensively, Derek Brown gets superstar to have. Jadevian Clowney, he just had back-to-back -back years with double-digit sacks. He's older, and I know some people may consider it cheating. He just had two back-to-back -back amazing years. He deserves at least superstar to have. He had great years with us. He definitely needs to have that superstar dad for Jadevian Clowney. Callaway only comes with star dad. That's fine. JC Horn gets superstar dad. Xavier Wood actually achieves star dad. Shaq Thompson gets superstar dad. Nice upgrades for the defense, but it's now time for the re-signing. For the players ready to negotiate, Deontay Johnson still doesn't believe that we have a franchise QB because of his interceptions. I'm going to have to pay him a bag. It's not going to be a five-year deal, but... He's been balling for us so hard. I can't let him hit free agency. He resigns on that for us for the rest of the rebuild, even though he's 30. He has X Factor. He's been putting up way too good of stats for me to just let him walk. Jordan Fuller, I guess I will have to overpay for him because if I'm being real, even though he's 28 and has start Ev, I'm going to have to produce this overpay just because I have the money and I don't have to pay Bryce Young. I want to maintain the team. We're a playoff team right now. We have yet to win a playoff, but he resigns. Bryce Young, I'll accept that option. Damian Lewis, no. Shaq Thompson, I mean, he's putting up numbers. He's getting over 140 tackles every single year. He resigns on another one-year contract with us. Yeah, superstar dev. Xavier Howard, I'll just do another one-year deal. He's an 80 overall. Put him on a veteran deal here. Jadevian Clowney, he's balling for us. I can't let him hit free agency if he's doing this good, putting up so many good numbers. And if we have money, why would I just not pay him, you know? Give him $14 million a year for one year. He resigns on that. Uh, Michael Pierce, I'm honestly going to let walk. I'm going to have my other guy start. And then everyone else here, I'm not really interested in. Yeah, it's time to move to into free agency with 97 million. After free agency, I got Joe Thune. He didn't want to be here, but I paid him an absolute bag to come to Carolina and replace Damian Lewis. He's a 90 overall. He may be 33, but I need him for the rest of this rebuild. Kendall Fuller on a two-year deal. He is 31, but he's an 86 overall. Devin White to hopefully replace Shaq Thompson. He is 28. Still, he's a higher overall despite his dev only being star. And then Damian Pierce. He did have interest with us before. For some reason, he doesn't, but I got him on a three-year deal. In the first round, I'm picking up a middle linebacker who I'm going to move to left outside linebacker, Justin Parsons, that I Wisconsin. He's a run stopper, 6'2", 245. Great athleticism across the board overall. I mean, he's not like crazy athletic in terms of speed and acceleration. I've seen like a 92 overall with middle linebackers before, but very nice for a middle linebacker. Hidden dev. A's and B's across the board. He looks great. In round number two, I'm going defense again. Our offense seems to be doing just fine in points per game, so I'm just going to stick with defense since it's considered middle of the pack in terms of 16th. Tim Lowry, not Lowry here. Hey, man, my my vocabulary continues to get worse. 6'1", 302, 90 strength, 76 speed, 84 
acceleration, hidden dev, A finesse moves, A play, play rec, and B tackle. Now, this is the team moving into year number three. Deontay Johnson hopefully continues to be a baller. Improved my running back situation just a little bit. O-line's the same. Honestly, the offense is just the same in general. I'm going to move Parsons to left outside linebacker. And then defensively, Lowry and Lowry here, 74 and 72. So they're low overalls, but hopefully they can develop for year number three and four. Defensively, we honestly look pretty good. Devin White over Shaq Thompson. A lot of depth here. I got Terry in the fifth round. So for a 69 overall, nice. Definitely not bad here. And I need to get a mentor for Bryce Young now that Andy Dalton retired. Matthew Stafford is now a 67 overall regress so far into the ground. He's a mentor, so I'm going to sign him. Now that we got Matthew Stafford as a temporary one-year mentor specialist, Jonathan Mingo's in the slot. I want Damian Pierce getting all the reps here. Everyone else looks pretty good here. Shaq Thompson's a backup now. But apart from that, we have a lot of depth at all positions. Like it a lot. And I like our defense a lot as well. Let's move into the midseason mark for year number three. Another great midseason for us. Five and one top of the division. This is the most consistent midseason I've had with any team. Usually it's like up and down and all around. But our offensive passing game is 21st. Everything else is in the greens though. So that's very nice for the team. Scouting national focus. I don't even really know what I need at this point. Sure, we'll do safety just in case Xavier Woods leaves. For the player reset is going into year number four. Ika McQuanu does want to be here. Team doesn't have a franchise QB. Come on. He's putting up numbers other than, you know, I mean, he's putting up interceptions as well. No state income tax for Jonathan Mingo. I'm just going to overpay for him. He resigns. 17 million left. DJ Johnson, not really interested in. AJ Dillon, same here. Xavier Woods, I wouldn't mind him back for another one-year deal for the rest of the rebuild. And then Shaq Thompson, I think he's just going to regress so far where I don't need him. Jadevian Klein, if he keeps putting up numbers, I'm going to resign him. Miles Sanders, uh, Xavier and Howard and everyone else here. I'm not really interested in Matthew Stafford. Can I keep him for next year? Actually, I just want to keep him for one more year to keep him as a mentor to keep the XP going up for Bryce Young. But Ikemaquano, hopefully we get the franchise QB tag for Bryce Young at the end of the year and his contract becomes cheaper. But we only have eight million right now. So for now, let's move into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs, 12 and five, top of the division. I don't think the Falcons made out of nine and eight. Wow, the rest of this division has been having a rough time. Coming off a week 18 win to the Vikings, and we're here to face the Eagles. Once again, Barkley having another great season once again. Hopefully we can actually beat them. Bryce Young, eh, not as good as the previous seasons with the touchdowns, but still good. Ninth best offense, 11th best defense. Okay, he improved on the interceptions. I'll sacrifice some passing touchdowns for some interceptions. 105 pass rating, 9 interceptions, 28 touchdowns, 4,100 yards. Definitely a good season with 70% completion percentage. Damian Pierce, 1,200 yards, 4.3 per carry, 18 touchdowns. That's actually a really nice season from Damian Pierce. I want to keep him. And then Jonathan Mingo, 82 receptions, 1,100 yards, and 9 touchdowns. I paid Deontay Johnson his bag. He was like, mm, I'm going to stop giving you a 1,000-yard season. Still, he had a solid season. Actually, a really nice season. 6 touchdowns, 900 yards, almost 1,000 yards, but like... Come on. I paid you a bag and he was like, I don't want to play anymore. Troy Franklin, 900 yards, five touchdowns, and our tight end with a nice season as well. Devin White with 115 tackles, tackles for a loss, 22 for Derek Brown, sacks, 11 for Jadavian Clowney, nine for Earl Calloway having a nice season, eight and a half sacks for Derek Brown, six and a half for Tim Lowry. Yeah, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Three interceptions for JC Horn, safety, zero defensive touchdowns is zero. Year number three, we made three wild card cards. Can we please get our first wild card win here? We do. 31-12, beating the living crap out of the Eagles there. 31-12 here to face the 7-10 Rams. Why are they allowed in the playoffs, dude? I'm not going to lose to the Rams. I'm playing this divisional round. I'm going to lose it if I lose to a 7-10 and 10 team after after they just start off with a bomb here. But it's 10-7, 10-10 to to in the second quarter. Finally taking the first lead of the game. I guess we don't get our extra point there. 16-10. to 10. Just hold the ball offense. I know it's only third quarter. Just run two clock. That's what I do. Um, it is 25-10. to 10. Good stuff. Yeah, I was not going to lose to a 7-10 and 10 team to the Rams. 28-10 to 10, as your Carolina Panthers are moving on to the conference championship. Here we are to face the 9-8 and eight Lions. They're only nine and eight but they're lions they're the lions they're good overall they're an 88 overall team same as us Aiden Hutchinson has X Factor. Let's move into it. Here we are against the Lions. They're going to open up with seven. We're going to respond with an immediate punt and then finally put seven on the board at the end of the first. 14 to seven here. Why are we punting in our opponent's territory? Stop doing that AI. 17 to 14 at halftime. We open up with a punt and then please offense do something. 24, 21. Please offense. It's third down. I got to make the stop here. Hopefully I can do it. Third and seven against the Lions. Third down and seven against the Lions. I got Sam Laporta covered. Please, somebody has to get to the QB and he throws it away. Fourth and seven. They will take their field goal and we will get a chance with the ball. Let's see what they got here. Get better field position. They're punting the ball? Wow. They were on the 38 and they didn't even attempt a field goal. Anyways, I got to come back in this game and finish it. 
First and 10. Can I get the wheel route? Oh, 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 I think I can. I think I can. He's not, he doesn't have the arm. He doesn't have the arm, but it doesn't matter because Damian Pierce comes down with the ball anyways. First and 10, huge gain. First and 10, let's just get in field goal range first. Damian Pierce with nice blocks up the field. That will at least put us in field goal range with Evan McPherson as our kicker. Second down and three. What are we gonna have waiting? I think I have that. Yes, sir. Number 84 up the field. Let's take a timeout with 32 seconds left. First and 10, gonna be looking for Deontay Johnson. I think I might have him over the middle. He's gonna be pushed forward. Second and two, 28 seconds left. Second and two, we're gonna give this to Damian Pierce here up the gut. Third and inches. I'm gonna run hurry up because it's almost fourth down here. I want to drain this clock as much as I can, and then, of course, get into the end zone. Third and inches. Please snap the ball. Damian Pierce right up the gut. Walk-in touchdown as we're going to take the lead with 10 seconds left, and they have to win with a touchdown here. I'm not going to hop in. They do nothing, and your Carolina Panthers, who are 12-5, and five, are moving on to the Super Bowl. Man, we got to play the Ravens in the Super Bowl. They're 10-7, and seven, 89 overall team. Lamar wins league MVP almost every time in, in the uh, Madden simulations and whenever he's healthy in real life, but for the team upgrades, offensively, we look the exact same. Defensively, Parsons comes with Superstar X Factor. What a W first round pick. Oh, he got Superstar X Factor. He came with Superstar still. Massive W pick. He wasn't even in the sub linebacker rotation, so I don't even know how, to, how we got a dev upgrade. Uh, Lowry only has star dev. And then everyone else here looks exactly the same, but team looks sick overall. 88 overall team. Let's see if we can beat the Ravens to capitalize on this rebuild. Here we are against the Ravens. They're going to start out with nothing. We're going to start out with nothing as well. They're going to put three on the board first. We didn't score anything in the first quarter. Dude, the offense do something. 13 to nothing. Offense do something. Wake up. Three points is not good enough. Put a touchdown on the board. There you go. 13 to 10, fourth quarter. You cannot choke this. Do not choke this. Red zone alerts, end game drive, third down alert. I'm going to have to clutch it here. I might want to just run this ball and then run shoe clock and finish the game. Third and one, and we're going to give it right back here to Damian Pierce to the outside. I'm fine. If I don't get that, just give me the first and I'm going to seriously start running shoe clock. Going to take a one point lead and try to end the game. No, I want to keep playing this, please. First and goal. Going to give this to Damian Pierce. He has a hole here. He's going to be stopped by superstar Trent Simpson. Still going to continue to run this clock. Second down and goal. Going to give it to Damian Pierce. It's a touchdown, but I'm going to lay down here on the two yard line just because I want to continue to drain this clock. They're not pressing Deontay Johnson, so that's going to be an easy touchdown for the X Factor Deontay Johnson. Five seconds left for the Ravens to take the lead. They will not be able to. I'm not going to let the AI screw this up. They're trying to ice me on my final PAT. I don't think Evan McPherson can be iced, can he? Yeah, no, he can't because he has the superstar ability and he has the slow kicker ability. So that's nice. It is up. It is good. 17 to 16. The Ravens aren't going to be able to get out of this one. I think that should be the game here. And it will be. 17 to 16 is your final score as your Carolina Panthers win their first ever Super Bowl, I believe. If I'm wrong on that, I'm sorry. But I'm pretty sure that's their first ever Super Bowl win. And your Carolina Panthers will be successful as this will be a successful rebuild. Your Super Bowl MVP is Deontay Johnson. He's the title in the thumbnail of the video. So why not? Joe Burrow wins the league MVP in the no other awards here for the Panthers. So that will be a successful rebuild, but we still have one more year to go. Let's see if we can go back to back. In the NFC South, Matthew Stafford retires with another easy ring. Garrett Bowles and Lane Johnson both retire as well. For the players ready to negotiate, team, that's such BS, dude. Team doesn't have franchise QB. You just won the Super Bowl. What more information do you need? Dumbest thing I've ever heard. Very player friendly. Here he signs. That's so stupid. Anyways, AJ Dillon, Shaq Thompson, I don't even want anymore. 11 million left. Jadevian Clowney, he's producing such good numbers. I'm just going to give him the very player friendly. I know it's three years, but I don't care. It's the final year of his uh, deal. Well, it's the final year of the rebuild. 1.7 million. I have no money left, and I still have to pay Bryce Young, but hey, I don't have to deal with that anymore because the rebuild's about to end. So for now, let's move into the draft. In the first round, picking up a right outside linebacker, Greg Harris. He was projected to go in the third round. I'm at pick 32. There is no other good linebackers on the board. He had elite acceleration too, and elite agility, obviously. 6'2", 223, hit and depth pass coverage archetype, A zone coverage, A tackle, A awareness. He looks great, especially for being projected to the third round. Still reached on him, doesn't matter. Now this is the team moving into the fourth and final year. Looks like we got a fullback, a hidden dev fullback, Nazir Barnett out of um, 
Alabama, I think that said. I might have said that wrong, but ooh, AI picked up this guy named Spidel. Sure, sure. W. W as well. So why not? Jonathan Mingo didn't develop as nicely as I want him to. Deontay Johnson stayed around an 85 overall, but he has an X Factor. He has a bag as well. Harris, we're going to put at the starter there and put him at the number two for the middle linebacker. The rest of the team looks really good. Hopefully they can be really, really nice in this fourth and final year. And we could go back to back. So anyways, apart from that, let's move into the fourth and final year with the Panthers, even though it's already a successful rebuild. 13 and four, top of the division. First round by our offensive rushing game is in the red and our defense passing game is 18th. Coming off a loss to the commanders, but still doesn't matter. We got a first round by here. Stats and awards. Let's see what we got. Bryce Young, top three QB in the NFL. Show me it. Oh, come on. I mean, technically, yeah, top three for a league MVP as well. And seventh best offense in the NFL. Bob Foster here, 11th best coach of all time. 12th best defense in the NFL. 4,300 yards, 38 touchdowns, eight interceptions. He has QB of the future tag, but not franchise QB tag. Come on, dude. He already won a Super Bowl. 5'10". On his height, definitely not, dude. He's like 5'9 on a good day. 114 pass rating, Damian Pierce, 15 touchdowns, only 3.6 per carry, and 1,000 yards this year, but still not horrible with the touchdowns. Deontay Johnson, back to his old self, 105 receptions, 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. He's been amazing for us throughout this rebuild. Jonathan Mingo, 8 touchdowns, 1,000 yards. Uh, ben Sinnott with 900 yards, 4 touchdowns. Troy Franklin, other than his rookie year, he's been kind of like, he's been solid piece for us, but he hasn't been anything amazing for us. Devin White, 124 tackles, tackles for a loss, 20 for Jadevian Clowney, sacks 11 for Jadevian Clowney. He's been a baller throughout this entire rebuild despite his age. Derek Brown with 10 sacks, four for Earl Calloway. He's been meh, whatever. Best season, he had like nine sacks. Interceptions, four for Jordan Fuller, four for JC Horn, and then safeties on the team. Zero defensive touchdowns is zero. For the fourth and final season in the divisional round, we're going to be playing the eight and nine New Orleans Saints, division rivals to move on back to the conference championship, and we lose. 35 to 21 to the third seat to the third ranked New Orleans Saints who are eight and nine in the division. That's crazy that we just lost there after going on a total run in the previous season. I mean, we only played the seven and 10 Rams in the previous season. If your record is below winning like at least nine and eight, you shouldn't be allowed to make the playoffs. That's just my personal opinion. But anyways, apart from that, guys, I thank you guys all for watching. This was a successful rebuild. And also Deontay Johnson was a total baller in this rebuild. But apart from that, guys, once again, I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next one.